Now, some of you may may wonder: Is a water tunnel a new thing? Uh, and interestingly, they're they're pretty old. The the first water tunnel ever was uh, was built by Leonardo da Vinci in the 15th century. Uh, but then, you know, uh, 400 years of uh, of nothing until Concord, because when Concord was first conceived of in the late 50s. Um, Aerodynamicists didn't understand vortex flows. Uh, vortices were shed by the tips of fixed span wings, but the idea of using vortices uh, in a positive way in the design process was brand new. So uh, the French and, and British team that developed Concorde was lucky though that there's a, a facility at Onera in Lille in northern France. Onera is the, the French NASA basically. And there was a, a scientist there named Henri Verle who ran the hydrodynamics laboratory at Onera. And that laboratory had been used for many things, uh, but none of them included aircraft design. But because the tunnels were there, the French were able to use those water tunnels very successfully in the final development of, uh, of the Concorde. So moving over here, we... Uh, we're going to test the second configuration of Concorde uh, tomorrow that's in the landing configuration with the droop nose and the gear down. Um, uh, the aerodynamics of this configuration are expected to be uh, slightly at least different from the, the clean aircraft that's in the tunnel. But then when water tunnels really became uh, widely accepted in the U.S., is principally because of the development of the Northrop F-5F. Uh, this aircraft has a very slender forebody. Uh, it's actually four feet longer than the previous F-5 and T-38 family of aircraft. That increased length strengthened the vortices that are shed from that forebody at high angle of attack. And it was found in flight tests that those vortices caused bad flight behaviors actually caused the aircraft to go out of control and enter a flat spin that was unrecoverable. The solution to that flight test uh, problem was the development of the now quite famous shark nose radome, which is slightly broadened at the tip. Uh, instead of being a conical shape coming to a point, it's got the cross section looks like, like a shark. And that very small change to the geometry of the forebody made a dramatic improvement in the flying qualities of the aircraft from approximately 20 degrees angle attack up even to 60 degrees angle attack. What was found was that shaping the forebody had a much stronger effect on directional stability above 30 degrees angle attack as the vertical tail did at lower angles of attack. So, Below 20 degrees, it's the vertical tail that provides directional stability to this aircraft. Above 30 degrees, it's the shape of the forebody that provides directional stability. That experience, you know, got a lot of exposure and got a lot of aircraft companies uh, interested in using the water tunnel and stepping forward many years to the development of the F-18E. Uh, you can see then the water tunnel played a large role in the development of this aircraft. You can see that the shape of the leading edge extension is quite different from the shape of the leading edge extension on the F-15, the legacy F-18, the A, B, C, and D. The principal goal here of moving this outboard was so that the vortex trajectory was outboard of the vertical tail because previous designs, the early model F-18, the vortex impinged on the vertical tail caused a great deal of uh, structural vibration and dynamics that, that was a problem. Uh, when the E model was designed to solve that, they moved this intersection point outboard and the shape, the position of that and the shape of the Lex was all tailored uh, in the water tunnel. And uh, this is the resultant aircraft. 